This video is for any aspiring directors or producers who have completed their pre-production phase and are now ready for their next phase, production. What is production? It is the second phase of the filmmaking process, and it is arguably the most fun. However, there are a few tried and true procedures in place that will help keep your cast and crew focused on time and on budget. In this video, we will discuss some helpful tips that can maximize efficiency on set, as well as provide confidence that you're capturing everything you need to tell your story. Hire a production assistant. In the last video, we discussed hiring a crew, and I mentioned that the essential four people required to execute a film shoot are director, producer, cinematographer, and sound operator. This is true, but do yourself a favor and hire a good friend who can be your production assistant. A production assistant, also called a runner or a swing, is an able-bodied person who can do a little bit of everything, like move gear, set up a light, and make a coffee run. For instance, you may be in a situation where you desperately need AA batteries. What do you do? Do you stop production and go get the batteries yourself? No. Send the production assistant to go get those extra batteries while you continue with production. Production assistants are a vital member of the production crew and will make production more efficient. Shooting your coverage. First shot of the day, regardless of the scene, should be the master. The master shot is typically shot in the widest field of view, i.e. 24 millimeter, that allows you to see the most, if not all, the action, and the scene is played out to the end. This is a great way to start the production because it allows the actors to get warmed up, the director can clean up the blocking, working out awkward moments that they didn't see in the pre-production rehearsal. It is also a great way to be inspired because you see the whole scene play out and new shots might pop into your head. It will also set up your line for the 180 degree rule. This is a rule that developed over time in the cinematography world, stating that the camera must stay on one side of an imaginary line between characters to provide visual consistency for the audience. For instance, if you have two actors sitting at a table across from each other, the 180 degree rule tells you to keep your shots consistent so an audience can follow along. So character one will always be on the left side of the frame, while character two is always on the right side of the frame, regardless of the shot type. Much of this would have been worked out in the storyboards, but executing it on set is just as important. You don't want a character to jump from one side of the frame to the other because an audience could get confused and it looks sloppy. After the master shot is complete, depending on the number of shots and the number of characters in the scene, you then move in closer for a medium shot, or you push in further for tight singles, which is a single actor on screen, or a two shot, two actors on screen, or an over the shoulder, one actor on screen, and the other actor's shoulder on screen, etc. Traditional coverage consists of a wide, medium, and close-up, but there are variations over the shoulder, the extreme close-up. This is where filmmakers' preference and experience come into play. How a director chooses to cover a scene is determined by their taste, but the master shot is an essential foundation that will let filmmakers play with their coverage moving forward. If you remember from our pre-production video, a shot list has been made, which was then turned into a shooting schedule, which was then put into the brain book. So as you start shooting, make sure you are crossing off shots as you go, so there's never any confusion about what has been shot and what hasn't been shot. Shoot at least three to five takes. This will come with experience, but shooting three to five takes is generally enough to get the shot. If you see a great performance in take two, don't move on right away, but rather get one more take for safety, just in case something about that previous take ends up not working in the editing process. Many times, my favorite take doesn't actually make the final cut because the next take is better for continuity because an actor's eye line matched the action better. Sometimes the continuity of a scene is more important than a performance. But this is where the real artistry comes into play. The cast and crew won't tell you when you have the best take. It is the director's decision when to move on to the next shot. That being said, listen to your actors. You may think their performance was good, but the actor wants to try something a little different and they may give you a better performance with a different tone than you were expecting. And it completely changes the tone of the scene for the better. The director is the captain of the ship, but filmmaking is the ultimate collaborative medium. So be sure to listen when someone has an idea. See one, shot one, take one, marker. This is an old fashioned tool that tells the person editing the footage what scene the shot is from, the shot number, and the take. This is crucial for organizing all the footage when it comes time to edit. The scene number and shot number comes from the shot list. The shot list is so important to the process because it is created in pre-production, used during production, and then helps streamline post-production. Each phase of production is directly linked to one another. 
Not only is the Slate an organizational tool, it is also a syncing tool. If you elected to use separate audio recorder, then you will need to sync the audio with the video. The Slate Clapper will provide this anchor point that will allow you to sync up your footage easily. This is very important. For an audience to believe that a scene is happening in real time, costumes, hair, props, liquids, eye lines must remain consistent with each new shot. This is called continuity, and on a big movie production, this responsibility falls on one person called the script supervisor. And they sit right next to the director with the script, making notes on every single thing so that it remains the same throughout the scene coverage. If you don't have one, you must pay close attention to those details. Actors are usually pretty good about that themselves, and they can help you remember you know, which hand they were holding something in or if their hair was behind their ear the entire time. A good workaround, especially with liquids, if your character is drinking throughout the scene, don't use a transparent glass that shows the level of liquid. Instead, use an opaque cup so the amount of liquid is never known to the audience. This will eliminate a lot of continuity stress. If you're using slash hired a DP, they will constantly be over the camera's LCD checking exposure and focus, but the director also needs to see what the image looks like because they are the audience. However, standing over the DP's shoulder, squinting at a very tiny LCD, is not the best way to judge what the final image will look like. Therefore, we highly recommend using an inexpensive HD on-camera monitor so that the director can absorb the performance and see what the composition will look like. If you can get the monitor off the camera rig and place it on a light stand, that would be even better. Although that would require a long SDI or HDMI cable that can stretch across the room, or better yet, a wireless video transmission system which would eliminate dangerous wires on the floor. These types of gear decisions would be decided in pre-production. If you're outside, set up a floppy flag overhead to block the sun's glare so your image can be seen clearly. You don't want any surprises when you look at your footage days later. So get it right on set, and an on-camera monitor will provide you that confidence. On a professional film set, an assistant director would perform the proper cadence of shouting out the action commands. Now, it varies depending on the scale of the production and the country you are in, but the general command cadence goes as follows. Okay, everyone quiet on set, camera up. We're gonna go for a take here. Uh, can we uh, roll sound, please? Sound speed. Sound is speeding, awesome. Can we roll camera? Camera speed. Fantastic. Uh, slate up. C1, shot one, take one, marker. And action. This kind of command cadence is incredibly important in running an efficient set. Sets can be chaotic, and the more people you have, and the more chaotic it can be, it is the director's job to keep everyone focused on the mission at hand. Shouting these commands in this order informs the cast and crew, who are most certainly joking around swapping stories, it's time to focus and work. Shotgun mics should be around 12 to 18 inches above or below the actor, just out of frame. Try to get it as close as possible without entering the frame, obviously. The DP and boom op should be in constant contact about the framing so they know how close the mic can get. I like to use a moleskin sandwich that traps the mic capsule in place so that it can be attached to close inconspicuously without the dreaded scratching noise. However, it can be difficult to laugh someone secretly if they are only wearing a tank top. But these placement options or issues can be addressed beforehand when selecting costumes for characters in pre-production. Avoid jewelry if possible, unless it is important to the character, as it can be noisy clanking against itself when a character moves. For instance, a necklace or bracelet can easily uh, clank or rub up against a lavalier mic. So if it's not important to the character, just remove it to save your sound. Unplug any electronic appliances, fans, AC units, especially the biggest culprit, the refrigerator. All these things use electricity and thus make noise. The fridge is always on and has a very distinct hum unless you unplug it. Make sure to have a charging station set aside for all your battery chargers. Be sure to always have one or two batteries charging at a time for each piece of gear that requires batteries. Whether it's a camera, lights, microphones, you never want to be in a situation where you're ready to shoot but you can't because all your batteries are dead. When selecting food to serve your cast and crew, be sure to send an email asking about allergies or dietary restrictions. Provide healthy choices that offer a good mix of carbs, proteins, and fibers. Also, when it comes time to eat lunch, be sure to eat a lunch. When we are in times of great stress, which filmmaking is, adrenaline takes over and we forget to eat. This is a mistake, you need to eat. But as a sign of respect, make sure the cast and crew eats before you. Directors, by tradition, eat last. 
Always keep an eye on the clock. If time is running out, meaning actors must go, or you will get kicked out of the location, or the sun is setting, be sure to focus on getting the shots you absolutely need to make the movie, and start cutting all the shots that will be too hard to pull off in time. This happens in almost every production. Something goes wrong and you must adjust on the fly because the clock is sadly always against you. If you need to go over that time that was scheduled, be sure to ask your cast and crew if they have what is called a hard out, meaning they absolutely need to leave. If not, ask if they could stay a little bit longer to get some important shots in the can. Have a station dedicated to media management on set and back up your footage before you leave the location. Best to have a laptop on set that can execute the footage dump. I like to break the day up in two halves. I shoot in the morning and then dump footage during lunchtime, format my media, and then shoot in the afternoon and then dump when the day is ended. The general rule is to have at least three portable hard drives that can back the footage up. This includes the audio files as well. So dump your footage and then back it up two more times onto separate hard drives as a failsafe. This is just a brief synopsis of things that can help your production run smoother, and there are loads more tips out there. But being smart with your coverage, being mindful of the continuity, using a slate with proper command cadence, and watching it on a much larger monitor will help make it a more efficient production and yield the best results possible. What are some of your favorite production tips? Let us know in the comments below. I'm Jake with B&H. Just keep rolling.